guys, so last week I had the lovely privilege of watching my boyfriend perform in his acapella choir. Yes, he sings in an acapella choir and I could not ask for uh, a better way to be completely spoiled. Anyway, while I was sitting in the audience, I just kind of started to think about this whole journey that I've been watching my boyfriend go through. I've actually been the one taking him to rehearsals. I watched him audition, watched him order their performance uniforms because yes, they have uniforms, it's amazing. They're in like vests. Huh. I have a thing for vests. So yeah, seeing my boyfriend in a vest was quite the treat for me. I was outside of the audition room when he was auditioning. He didn't really know what to prepare for this audition, so he just sang whatever came to mind, and the song that came to mind was My Body Lies Over the Ocean. I'm hearing him sing this through the door. If it wasn't such a professional setting, I was so tempted to just bust the door open and be like, who does Bonnie b He thought it would have been funny if I actually did, but no, uh, I do not suggest doing stuff like that. In any case, this whole waiting outside the audition room, it reminded me a lot of what my mom probably went through when she was taking me to rehearsals, when she was outside of my audition rooms and whenever she would come to see my concerts. Growing up, my mom was always there when it came to my musical adventures. One, I couldn't drive, so she was my driver. And two, she was just very supportive of my musical journey. She knew that both of her children were very strangely artistic, very much not what you would expect of a typical Asian kid. She invested so much time, effort, energy, gas, money. When you're sitting in rehearsal for like two or three hours straight, the stuff that you're rehearsing gets stuck in your head pretty good. And so I'm just kind of mindlessly humming these tunes in the car on the way home. And my mom would hear them every single week to the point that she memorized these tunes that I was humming. And so she always thought it was really funny when she would hear those tunes finally in concert. She'll be like, oh my gosh, I know that tune. Now I know where it fits in in the big picture. John did the same thing. Whenever I take him home from rehearsal, he's always humming and singing his parts or even other people's parts because they've been rehearsing for like three hours. Now, like even I'm just like humming the, the tunes and I've memorized it. So it's kind of interesting. Like now I know why my mom was able to memorize the tunes I was humming. It's because it's happening every single week. I get it now. Their experience actually becomes part of your experience too, which is really interesting. I, I never really thought of my mom being so directly involved in my musical journey that my musical journey would you know, become part of hers too. The other thing that I find really interesting is that I remember now, now that I'm taking John to rehearsals, the reality is that when you're the musician, you don't actually always want to go to rehearsal. Sometimes you would rather just be at home vegging. After the rehearsal, you always know that it was worth it, but it's that like half an hour to an hour before rehearsal when you really don't want to go because you just, you really don't want to work basically. It's a weird conflicting thing inside of you that I think most people don't necessarily realize that a lot of musicians are like this. And it's funny because I watched my boyfriend go through this. I found that I couldn't really say things like, oh, chin up, you'll be fine, you can do it. And I also found myself making sure I didn't say things like, oh, you signed up for this, don't you want to go if you signed up for this? Putting that guilt factor on the person that you are supporting to do this thing, it doesn't help. And my mom never did that to me. I'm only realizing now that she must have thought that before, but she chose not to say it. She could have said it to me and she would have been right, but she knew that guilt tripping me like that into going to rehearsal, you know, would just make me feel worse. I didn't realize like how appreciative I should have been of her just totally telling me, yeah, man, yeah, it sucks to have to go to rehearsal now, even though you're so tired after school. Hearing her, say that it sucks. It like made me feel so much better. It was like, okay, well, I guess if another person thinks it also sucks, then, you know, at least I'm not the only person who thinks that this sucks and I'll just like go and suck it up. I'm trying to do the same thing for John. I also realized that because I obviously have a lot of experience doing this music stuff, it's very tempting to give too much advice. 
on the one hand, if you have gone through you know, the same stuff as the person you're supporting, you can give good tips. In fact, that is probably very appreciated by the person you're supporting. But you can't give too much because at the end of the day, their musical journey is theirs alone. I've said that before in a couple of other videos and I maintain that that is one of my biggest convictions is that you have to let people walk their own journey. For example, there was this whole uniform thing that John had to order. I was thinking that he should probably have gotten the measurements and ordering it and stuff like that way earlier. He didn't seem worried about it, so I was like, you know, why would I be worried about his uniform if he's not worried about it? So I just let it go. Turns out when we did measure him, we actually got one of the measurements wrong for his sleeve length. We were actually really lucky that the people within the group who order the uniforms, they actually order a lot of different sizes. So just in case one doesn't fit you, you can actually quickly exchange for a different size. So he got to do that. Not only that, they actually had a pair of new pants on the day of the concert and they deemed John's pants unworthy of the stage because they were way too old. So they actually made him change into new pants and they just simply added that to his order. You know, for me, I now realize that all of my performances, I just have to go shopping for my own black clothes, my concert black clothes. And I realize now that I am not familiar with how these groups with performance uniforms actually work. As the support, you may think that you know how things work because you've been through similar things, but the fact remains that you are not in that particular group. Therefore, you do not actually completely know how that group is run. I only kind of asked out of curiosity once or twice about the uniform. You have to be careful how you ask too, because you have to ask in a way where you're making sure that the other person knows that you're just curious as to how it works, but that you trust and you know that they will take care of things by themselves. This is something that I just learned and I wanted to pass it on to you guys. For all of you parents who are watching your children and go through all of this musical stuff and you're taking them to rehearsals, competitions, festivals, concerts. While this may be your child that you are raising, that you are teaching, I would encourage you to let them experience their musical journey on their own without you solving their problems for them. I can't even express how appreciative I am of my mom doing exactly that for me. Go figure. She is a pianist and she never taught me any music. She told me that she is just my support rather than her teaching me along with another teacher teaching me because she was very concerned that her style of teaching and what she teaches may not be in line with my actual teacher. She kept that line very distinct. She never crossed that boundary and I am so freaking amazed at that really. That's the thing is that I think a lot of parents kind of walk into this whole thing with your child going into music without really realizing that you can actually come in conflict with your child's teacher without you hardly ever talking to the teacher, actually. It puts your child in a tough place. For the child, it's like, well, who do you please, right? Because you are still under the authority of your parents, but you're also under the authority of your teacher. And your teacher is the one teaching you the music and the instrument. So it's like, but mom and dad are telling me to do this instead, you know, but they think that they're right because they're telling me to practice. So you see, if you are watching this video, you are probably trying to seek out advice on this issue. So I'm just going to be super blunt here. It feels really weird to say it out loud, but it's the truth. And that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you parents who are looking to see how you can support your child going through a amazing musical adventure. And for those of you who are not parents, I hope that this at least provided some insight as to maybe people who supported you. Please share in the comments below any sort of musical support stories you guys have. Uh, who supported you the most? Who didn't support you? 
I don't care. Let me know in the comments below. And as usual, if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there. And if you want to catch me during the week, my social media network stuffs are down there. But otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bye. Holy cow, it is very bright. Oh my god, the sun is like in. Oh my gosh, look at I look all like oh, I'm so holy.